Okay, welcome to Trip Preps Playoff Edition. We have one week of games under our belts now. Uh, Friday night had a lot of first round games. As you can see, a lot of us here out and about. I'm Todd, the sports editor here with Andrew over here, James here, Eric on the end. We are all out of games. We'll talk about those uh, after we do a quick score list. Um, like I said, a lot of teams, so bear with me on the scores. Uh, Division two, one to key, 49-6 over Holman. Central, 41-14 over DeForest. I was there, we'll talk about that. Uh, Division three, Rice Lake, 50-7 uh, over Logan. Sparta, 43, Lakeland, eight. Baraboo, 27, Toma, 26. Onalaska, 56, Rhinelander, six. Eric was over in Onalaska. Division four, West Salem, 33-14 over Adams Friendship. James was there. Uh, Division 5, Aquinas, 42-6 over New Glarus Monticello. Um, Andrew was over at that one. Uh, Watertown Luther Prep with the upset, 21-18 over Westby. Curry Desheen, 42-20 over Clinton. Stanley Boyd, 34-21 over GET. We thought GET might be making a run, but it just didn't happen. Uh, Division 6, Coleman, 31-21 over Onalaska Luther. Division 7, uh, kind of what we expected, Cashton 48-22 uh, over Blair Taylor, although that game was close early. Bangor 28-0 over Royal. Pepin Alma 42-7 over Mel Min. So what does that leave us with? Eight teams? Yep, next week, uh, James. So not many of them here. A lot of teams be heading on the road. Um, let's start with, let's start with Onalaska. Um, just because that seemed like that's a game that Onalaska really needed after losing to Toma last week. Yeah, it was very obvious that they were, number one, not happy about losing to Toma. Number two, right, not getting the MVC title outright. Number three, they wanted another shot at Medford. Um, so all it. three, they had, they had no shortage of uh, <clears throat> motivators going into this week. Uh, everybody that I talked to was like, yeah, we had a great week of practice, really focused. Um, and it was pretty clear early on that this was going to be a fairly one-sided game. Um, Onalaska just got so many uh, weapons offensively um, and defensively they're, they're up to the task. Uh, granted, Ryan Lander kind of put themselves in a, in a bind here and there, but it was 14, or 13 nothing after three minutes and 27 and nothing after the first quarter. So it was it was out of hand pretty quickly. Um, now they get their shot at Medford. Yeah, they get their shot at Medford. Uh, every they pretty much only played their starters for the first half. Um, Skipton was still through for over 200 yards. Um, how many touchdowns did he have? Let me see here. Four touchdowns. Big so, day for Mitchell too, or did he spread it around? He spread it around. Okay. Uh, Mitchell had, I've got it here. Mitchell had four catches for 52 yards, um, the score. Mm -hmm. uh, Gilhausen had, uh, 80 yards, but on just two catches, both of them touchdowns though, and Skemp at three for 73, and a score. And Skemp, okay, I would say Skemp just kind of catches touchdowns now, it seems. <laughs> at least second half of the season. That's yeah. kind of how it's turned into over yeah, there. Yeah. And is really coming on for them. Yeah, so they've got speed, they've got size. Uh, Brady Kuhn had two rushing touchdowns tonight. Uh, like I said, the defense was up to the task. The really interesting thing to me was just how much they dominated the the field position game. Uh, there were even a couple of kickoffs where I don't know how in the world they managed to do it, but the ball died right on the one yard line. Like they're kicking it past the guys that are set up at like the 15 or the 20 to like return the kick. And they're like, oh, it's it's going at a pretty good clip past them, but it just dies, oh just dies at the one. And so, you know, Ryan Lander's got terrible field position. They either go three and out or they turn the ball over, and all of a sudden, Anna's got the ball inside their their own fifth, like inside the fifty. And on three of their last four possessions of the first half, they scored on the first play of their of their possession. So okay. they, I, Adam Skifton said uh, that he knew this quote was corny, but. It's Jimmy's and Joe's, not X's and O's, and they like the guys that they had. Yeah. So, um, I heard Yashinsky say that before too. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yes, all so, in all, good good win for them to get back on track um, after last week. Get some frustration out. Even talk to Gash a little bit. Like, would you rather have like a blowout in the first round or like play a close game? And like they've played plenty of close games in the regular yeah, season, right? Yeah. So, and now they're able to they were able to rest some guys in the second half, get healthy. But they still feel like they've got 
right, that close game experience that could become a factor next week. They really don't have to worry about like how are our guys going to respond if we go down kind of situation. So, so, so next week, third seeded on Alaska at second seeded Medford. Medford had them a pretty one sided loss in week two. So, yep. uh, the motivation will continue throughout the week for the Hilltoppers. Uh, let's go to West Salem, James. Uh, first, tell us about the quarterback situation, <laughs> yeah. what they did, and, and how they kind of pulled away in this game because it was tight early. Yeah, Luke uh, Baginski hurt out there in a, a sling. So the nod went to freshman Drew McConkey, And, uh, you know, freshman quarterback, you're kind of like, oh, gosh, is he going to, like, where is the mistake going to come, you know, the freshman first-time starter mistake? It never really came. Uh, he finished with, I think, well over 200 yards, had a touchdown pass uh, to Abraham uh, Lassen, who was his top target. Um, Lassine. Lassine. I know, sorry. I know the pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it doesn't look like it. But Abraham it Lassine, the, the touchdown catch. Um, and by the time he got that touchdown catch, West Salem started to pull away. It was 6 6 at halftime. Uh, both teams, they were, able to, they were able to pop off a big play here and there, but the defense is actually held them pretty well in check. Uh, Adam's friendship started the second half with an onside kick that they recovered, went uh, four and out, turned it over on downs. A few possessions later, uh, McConkey had a touchdown run to put West Salem up. Then uh, Adam's friendship went for a fake punt, try and catch them off guard, didn't work, set up decent field position for McConkey to find uh, Lacine for the touchdown. And so they went to the third up two scores already, start off the fourth quarter, blocked punt return uh, for a touchdown from Miles Olson. And from there it was just, you know, all but final basically, because it, it, most of the day Adam's friendship couldn't do a lot. Uh, they couldn't get a lot of big stuff going in the run game and the pass game was very, very hit or miss. And I, ultimately, I guess the difference was just McConkey being able to be pretty consistent. I mean, he didn't necessarily light up the, the Adams Friendship defense per se, but he did what he had to, and he did, I would say, way better than you would expect for a freshman uh, quarterback in his first start in the playoffs against a, a conference champion. Yeah, nice, nice debut there for Drew McConkey, at least as a starter. He played a little last week against the Columbus yeah. and, and, and seemed to do okay in that game. Didn't seem overwhelmed by the moment or anything. And he, and he um, didn't seem overwhelmed by this. Uh, he's a McConkey. So. Yeah. He, the, the coaching staff kind of talked about, like, is he going to need to sign a release or anything to do an interview? You know, only 14 years old. <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally fine, totally calm, totally confident in, in what he had to do this week. He's so watched brothers and sister, and yeah. he, he understands what's going on. So West Salem, fourth seed at Lodi next week. Uh, that's a, a big ask to be, go down there and play Lodi. I didn't see what their score was tonight. Um, but a lot of their games, almost all their games, have been very one-sided. Uh, very good Lodi team awaits West Salem. So uh, let's go over to Andrew, and, and you can tell us a little bit about uh, Aquinas, which we don't get that aquinas Westby matchup in round two, but uh, Aquinas held its end of the bargain and had a one-sided win. Yeah, you know, uh, with a, a one versus eight matchup, you know, you kind of want to see, does the one seed play down to their opponent and, and win, win low? Not the case for Aquinas. Uh, Aquinas went and took care of business, uh, scoring early and often. Uh, you know, they had the run game going pretty well. Moline, two touchdowns. Uh, Kyle White had a touchdown and, and led the team with 82 yards. Even uh, linebacker uh, Brady, uh, how do you pronounce his last name again? Leonard. Leonard. Okay, Brady Leonard had a uh, had a touchdown on a, a little uh, trick play formation uh, with uh, loading up as many linemen as they could get uh, onto the field. Uh, but uh, you know they've had a good running game all year. They they uh, you know accentuated that. Logan Becker had a, a big day, ninety five yards, two touchdowns. Uh, he had the game's first touchdown on a fifty five yarder, uh, and it was sort of off to the races. They got out to a twenty six zero lead just before halftime. Uh, they uh, the uh, the Blue Golds fumbled the ball. Nuclear scored only touchdown with about forty some seconds left until halftime, and uh, Tom Lee took full blame for that. He said, I, "I didn't do a good job managing the clock that allowed that uh, that fumble." But uh, they bounced right back and, and forced a fumble on the first play of the second half, and it was back off to the races for the Blue Golds as they uh, as they cruised. Okay, still a tough future path uh, for the Blue Golds. Watertown with their prep. Uh, of course, by beating Westby, really kind of 
legitimizes itself that with that win. Uh, that's not going to be an easy game, uh, and they get tougher after that, of course. Uh, but we'll see what happens on next next Friday when Aquinas, one of very few home games we're going to have uh, in the area. We're going to have to be branching out next year or next week. I think uh, Watertown with their prep will just uh, stay in a hotel for the next week instead of no. taking that long drive across <laughs> no. the state again. No, I'm sure they're going. I'm sure they're going. Uh, my game, Central really played well against the Forest tonight. Over 500 yards of offense, uh, three takeaways defensively, uh, a big interception uh, by Carson Jones on the first drive of the game. The Forest took possession, drove from their own 19 down to the Central 18. And you haven't seen that happen to Central very much at all this year. Defense has been fantastic. Um, but they went up-tempo, uh, went some no-huddle, one, one of their pass plays was tipped by a central defender, but landed right in the arms of a receiver. So they had a little luck uh, on the way down the field there. Uh, Jones got a big interception. And the reason it was big was it didn't allow DeForest to build any momentum. Uh, and two plays later, Jude Alvarado goes 84 yards to Aaron Poma, who just ran by the defense right down the middle of the field. Uh, Alvarado put a great pass right in his hands. So huge touchdown play, and that completely changed everything. Know, they had their backs against the wall, uh, didn't want to fall behind, didn't turn it into a big play. Scored the first 19 uh, in the game. And then DeForest it showed some life. They got a touchdown 19 to 7. And then Central took about seven and a half minutes off the clock. Mm -hmm. And Alvarado punched it in from the one with 11 seconds left in the half to make it 26 7. Uh, and that kind of squashed what, what DeForest was building there. So. Uh, a great day for Gavin Shepard. I had him 181 yards. Uh, he also had a touchdown in there. Henry Meyer, a couple of touchdown catches. Um, as I think it was Antoine Hardy on the sideline was asking Henry after the second one, are you back? Are you back? <laughs> He's back. Uh, two catches tonight, both of them were touchdowns, uh, 66 yards. So four seed central. And again, big win over DeForest. I know DeForest came in at five and four, but that's a Badger conference team. Really good conference. <coughs> Anytime the MVC matches up with the Badger and comes out with a win, that's a big deal. Uh, so they beat a really good program tonight. Now they get Wana Key, which is a much different story uh, next week. So we'll see how they can uh, turn this into something positive going into that game. I was about to say, I, I can't imagine there's been a lot of times this year where they put up 500 yards and that kind of offense. No, and, and they did, yeah, they ran it and passed it well. Alvarado, Alvarado had 203 passing yards, I think I had him with. Um, That's a good night. I mean, yeah, and like I said, ran for the touchdown. So they're balanced too. They didn't just rely. Christian Ruger had some good runs out of the backfield as well. Um, so they really, everywhere they turned, they found success uh, tonight in this game. Again, that's going to be a lot harder against Wanaki. So we'll see uh, how Central can fare in that one. So uh, any of the other matchups I didn't mention, I'll, I'll just go down the list. Uh, as we said, fourth seeded Central at Wanaki in Division Two. Uh, Sparta, four seed at Rice Lake, a one seed in Division Three. On Alaska at Medford, we mentioned. West Salem at Lodi in D4, we mentioned. Luther Prep at Aquinas, uh, D5. Columbus at Prairie du Chien. What did Blake Theory do tonight? I, if I remember <laughs> correctly, it was... 329 yards. On 23 carries, I believe, right? And, and five touchdowns. 29, maybe it was 29 carries, but... And five touchdowns, yes. Blake Theory with an... That kid. So, so big, that'll be a big ground matchup with Theory, and you got Brunel, the new uh, yeah, career the new. Uh, leader in rushing yards for Columbus. Yep. So we'll see them match up. And we we talked sort of throughout the week of uh, we might get a Aquinas Westby matchup rematch. That's off the cards now, but if those two teams take care of business, that's a very exciting Aquinas. Aquinas PC. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, Prairie Sheen beat him week one. It's also if Aquinas, if Aquinas wins. If Aquinas wins, that's an exciting game against Columbus too. Yeah. Uh, if it comes down to that, I think Aquinas probably State champs. Aquinas probably wants um, Prairie Duchene. They've they've grown a lot as a team from yeah. from week one until now. Yep. And uh, look, gotta focus on Luther Prep first because it, it beat Westby. Um, CFC uh, won today and gets to go to number one Cash in Division Seven. Bangor with its win uh, as a three seed goes to second seed at Pepin Alma. And they have a good playoff history between the two of them already. So that'll be a fun match. We'll see. Yeah, sure. we'll see how that gets kind of built on. So um, that takes care of us. We have stories on all of our games. Uh, we have photos in there. We have some videos in there. Uh, LacrosseReview.com. You can find all that stuff. 
Uh, we'll have plenty more throughout the weekend, UWL football game against Oshkosh. We have sectional cross country tomorrow. We have some uh, regional finals in volleyball, uh, regionals in soccer. So lacrossetribune.com, you can find all that stuff too as we get it. Um, and I think that takes care of us for the night. It's only 105. Pretty good. So we didn't do too bad here. Um, we've been earlier, but we've also been later. <laughs> so, all right, that takes care of uh, round one of the playoffs. We'll be back again to talk about uh, round two next week. Thanks for, thanks, uh, thanks for joining us.